Your secondary weapon, the bow, is essentially a sniper weapon. It takes maybe a second to ready the bow, but then you have to aim. It'll go to a sort of first person view, you'll turn the overall camera with the control stick, and more precisely aim with the pointer. And it's best to aim at something for a couple of seconds. The crosshairs will decrease in size as you get an increasingly accurate shot, ending with turning red, which is when you have the kill shot. The upgrades for all three are a bit mixed. Some are fairly helpful, like the ability to dodge while you have the bow readied. Others are not necessarily all that useful. To ready the bow, you have to hold down B, which is essentially the trigger on the Wiimote. And to fire, you have to press A. I don't think they thought that one through. You ask me, it should have maybe been the other way around. And I know that would interfere with the A button being the general action button. But still, using the trigger to ready the weapon is awkward. A is basically the go-to key. If you approach something that you can climb, it'll prompt you to press A. You can climb it or vault it, maybe. You also come across places where you have to climb by sort of jumping from, I don't know, plant that you can hang on to, to plant that you can hang on to. And you do this by pressing the A and B buttons when prompted to. Not too soon, not too late, or you'll fall down and have to start over. The game auto saves fairly often, and almost no matter where you die, you don't have to replay very much. I'm not entirely certain if it saves your progress if you go entirely out of a level back to the main menu, but if you just die, you can just try it again. There are 13 levels total. The longest are upwards of an hour, and the shortest are just under 10 minutes. This is a very short game. You can complete it in a day, day and a half tops. At any point, one of your friends can join in with the jump in, jump out feature, as seen in several other games, such as the LEGO Star Wars games, X-Men Legends. For a couple of levels, as I already mentioned, you get to fly the Banshee. This is very majestic. You'll do these grand sweeps across Pandora, flying around up in the air with multiple floating islands around. You'll fly through a couple of caves, up and down waterfalls and the like. It is very immersive, very thrilling. It's one of the best flying features in recent games. Use the balance board if you have one. I don't know exactly how it works if you don't have one. I could imagine just the control stick. Basically, lean forward, you'll go downwards, lean backwards, upwards, right and left, right and left. You don't control how fast it goes or the overall direction. The overall route is entirely pre-planned, linear. But you dodge obstacles, pick up the Aiwa spirits that are also in the other levels, and that help you upgrade. And it also helps you dodge when you're being fired upon by one of the dropship-like aircraft. Oh, and you get to shoot back at those. And you get to use your Banshee to tear its metal ass apart. Yes, when flying, you can also fire the bow and arrow. If a second player has joined, it's the second player who shoots, and the first player controls the Banshee. When not chased by aircraft, you can shoot down mines that float in the air for points as well. When taking apart aircraft when airborne yourself, and in the boss fights, and to do various tasks, you're asked to move the Wiimote 
in a certain direction, in a certain way. And while there are a few missed opportunities, on the whole, they make pretty decent use of it. It's very satisfying to tear apart a mech. The only character from the movie to appear in this is Sigourney Weaver's character, and she voices it herself, and she does fine enough. She has like two lines. In general, the voice acting is pretty good, and the humans have some nice characterization. You'll sometimes hear them yell. I don't remember the name, but let's say Roscoe. Roscoe was my friend! And then there are the very funny ones where they think that they're entitled to Pandora and act like it's Ryuk who's the one who started all this. I don't know if Cameron wrote those personally or if he just sent out a memo saying the humans are completely deluded. They call you Rebel, by the way. And sometimes Tree Hugger. Other than moving around in the woods, which, by the way, you get to explore during the daytime, during the nighttime, and the lighting, colors, and designs are quite good. Many things in this are straight out of the movie. Creatures, the general look and feel of things. The lighting is pretty good for the Wii and for a licensed video game. Anyway, in addition to the woods, you also get to infiltrate and clean out several human bases. And they have turrets with and they have turrets where you have to dodge the lasers or you'll either raise the alarm or get shot at. Some of the tur some of the turrets can be taken out. Some of the turrets can be taken out by remote panel. Sometimes you have to take out remote panel to shut down a grid so that you can proceed. Also, you'll sometimes find stuff that the humans have stolen from your clan. And these work as pickups. The only real replayability is in getting all the pickups and the upgrades. And it also registers the highest difficulty you've completed any level on. There are three to choose from, and even on the easiest, it can sometimes be challenging. The game manages to not be terribly repetitive by mixing it up a bit. If you've just gone through a level where most of what you did was just run run around the woods, take out then maybe the next level will have you infiltrate a base, or let you fly the Banshee. I would also say that several of the levels are genuinely memorable. All of the flying ones are. Near the end, they do kind of start to just repeat what they have to work with. You know, you don't get a new challenge, you just get, like, twice what you fought before. And this also doesn't particularly expand the universe that the movie introduces us to. The gameplay is remarkably fun for how closed it is. You'll almost always use the staff because the bow is somewhat slow, it immediately gives away your position to anyone looking in that direction, and as you may already know, a bow and arrow can't quite fire as fast as an assault rifle. The story is overall predictable, and there really isn't that much of a story, but it's a decent enough story. The boss fights can be a tad awkward, because often you'll have to do a sneak attack, so often you'll, because often you'll have to do a stealth attack, so you have to sneak behind the enemy, avoid him seeing you, and he could turn around and spot you in the middle of your sneaking around. But on the whole, they are pretty cool and memorable and some of them are memorable, and once again it is very satisfying to do the advanced stealth attacks, the ones on mechs and boss enemies. I don't, I don't think there's any CGI in this, and there are only maybe two or three in-engine cutscenes. Basically, the story is told in text over a still background. 